Hello everybody, my name is John and welcome to a brand new series on the Traction Channel. In this series we will be working our way through all of the available circuits on Assetto Corsa Competizione, helping you find those extra seconds you have been painfully seeking. For our first edition we will be taking a closer look at the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya. This track is a great place to start as it's one of the most commonly used in Europe for all disciplines of high profile motorsport. It's also a circuit you can find in pretty much any racing game or sim, so it's a good one to know inside out. For this video we have selected the Porsche 911 as it suits the tight and twisty nature of the venue well. Don't forget that if you want to see other car and track combinations, you can subscribe to the Traction channel and hit the notification bell to see them as they're released. So without further ado, let's jump into the analysis. So as the lap begins, you have plenty of time to sort yourself out for turn 1. Keep an eye out for the braking markers on the fence and get right up onto the curb and runoff area on the left hand side before the corner, as long as you keep two wheels inside the white line. Brake just before the 100 board and change down through all the gears to second. You can roll off the brake as you approach the apex, just to let the car turn freely, using the curb on the inside but watching out for the little raised block. Once you get through, grab third gear and slightly feather the throttle as you get through turn 2. Again, it's a similar situation with the curbs, you want to use the standard curb without hitting the raised block. Throughout this section, it's mainly a case of modulating your throttle input to keep the car on the perfect line and well balanced. If you can, try and stay to the left of the circuit in order to prepare yourself for the infamous turn 3. As you pass the small section of black runoff that lies between the grass areas on the left of the circuit, turn in and short shift to fourth, staying on the throttle. This corner is incredibly long, so don't worry about being a reasonable distance from the apex at the beginning. It's then a case of rolling off the throttle based on how much grip you have underneath you, whilst aiming to hit the apex midway through the corner. Once you get there and ideally kiss the curb on the inside, put your foot down fully and let the car do the work. Open up your steering as you head to the corner exit and use all of the room you need in order to carry maximum speed. Keep your car way over to the left for turn four. It might seem mad, but you can use a huge amount of the runoff area in this particular section. As long as you keep two wheels on the kerb, you won't be penalised somehow, so I'd suggest making the most of it. Start your braking just before you cross the white strip that runs across the runoff area, just below the bridge. You want to trail brake here, turning in and shifting down to second. As you get closer, you want to roll off the brake, allowing the front of the car to turn in nicely. I should emphasize that this technique works well in cars such as the Porsche, Audi or BMW, but not necessarily every car. So if you've taken something like a Bentley to Spain, then I can only apologise, you might need to sacrifice a little bit of lap time and scrub off slightly more speed. But anyway, as I was saying, you get the nose of the car in and you want to aim to hit the apex midway through the corner, touching the inside kerb. Get on the power as early as possible and open up your steering. Just be careful for oversteer here, which could be quite common. Use as much of the track as you need on the exit whilst keeping it pinned, and quickly haul yourself back over to the right to prepare for turn 5. It's very tricky to point out a specific reference point here for braking because there isn't really much to go on. There's a tower on the left that lines up reasonably well with the ideal braking point, but if you are looking at that tower whilst approaching the braking zone, you're definitely doing something wrong. With this one, it's just a case of practice and getting used to how it feels. Change down to second and turn in. With this corner, you want to just miss the inside on the entry in order to cut back. Get the late apex and get on the power as early as possible. Use most of the exit curb, just watch out for track limits as always. You want to stay towards the right hand side through the kink and focus on your entry into turn 7. Straighten the car and place it next to the curb. Brake just before the curb begins, change down to second and roll off the brake, turning in early and letting the camber of the corner slow the car down and hold you on that racing line. At the apex you want to be fully over the red and white curb, but watch out for the green area as it can be a bit unpredictable. Get back on the power at the apex and use the green runoff area on the exit, also cutting the wee curbs in the direction change. Stay left and at the end of the entry curbing, lift off the throttle. You don't actually need to brake here when hot lapping, but might do with a heavy fuel load and a car that's maybe less suited to these style of corners. Turn in and use a wee bit of power when required in order to keep the car on the line and in shape. Aim to hit the apex midway through the corner, just touching the red and white curb. Try to carry as much speed as possible and use all of the exit curb and runoff. Drift back to the right and brake comfortably before the 100 meter board. Shift all the way down to first and get over the red and white curbing on the apex. Get back on the power watching for oversteer and use the exit curb. For turn 11, some cars can cut more than others. In this lap I stuck to the red and white curb and avoided the green section as it can sometimes throw you off, but see how your car handles it when you try it. Straighten the steering and get on the brakes instantly, changing down to second. Try to hold a nice tight line through here, getting on the power nice and early and using all of the available space on the exit. Stay out there for turn 13. Again, there are a lack of reference points here but this one feels fairly straightforward when you try it for yourself. Brake, change down to second and get the car in over the red and white apex curb, avoiding that sausage curb at all costs. Get on the power again and haul the car back to the right. On this occasion I was slightly further to the left and therefore was compromised into the chicane, so try and be even further over if you can. Again, there aren't many reference points here but as you can see the corner, it's a bit easier to judge it based on feel. 
Shift down to first and use the inside kerbs. Quickly change direction, short shift, and again use the flat section of kerbing while on throttle to optimize your exit speed. Try and let the yellow sausage kerb hold your car online. If you understeer over the top of that kerb, your car can bottom out and you will lose exit speed and receive a track limits warning. So just be careful not to put on too much power too soon. The last corner is simple enough flat out. Just make sure you kiss the inside white line midway through the corner to avoid any understeer. Use the exit kerb and that is a lap of the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya. Now let's take a look at it in full speed to give you some context as to how it all pieces together. This is the lap time I managed to set in this video, as well as a couple of reference laps for you guys to aim for. The AM lap represents a good starting point when you're first learning the circuit, the Pro AM lap is a good place to be if you're looking to be competitive online, and of course the Pro lap is for the fastest guys in the world. Hopefully you've managed to pinpoint a few areas where you can improve your lap times. When it comes to ACC, always bear in mind that there's a huge amount of variables at play compared to most games. Some cars can be up to a second off the pace on a track that doesn't suit them. Temperatures and track grip levels can also play a big part, so don't worry too much about your ultimate lap time. Just focus on getting each corner right and results will begin to swing your way. Just before we finish up, I'm going to attempt to summarise the key points about this circuit in 10 seconds. You never know, it might just come in handy if you have 35 seconds until your race starts, you've done no practice and you have your YouTube tab open. Use all the space on entry and roll through turn 1, use curbs but not the blocks, focus on late apexes and keep the car nicely in line for turn 3, 4 and 5. Carry speed in early for 7, don't break for 9, abuse the curbing for 10 and 11, keep it tight for 12 and 13, smooth through the chicane, watch the high curbs and focus on your exit. Thanks very much for tuning in and hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, we would love it if you could leave us a like and subscribe to the Traction channel. This will help us grow as quickly as possible, allowing us to bring you more and more helpful and exciting content in the future. Until next time, keep it pinned, thank you and goodbye.